I wanted to talk a little bit about who this guy is, who Shane Vaughn is. I put a clip compilation together of a few of his more interesting takes, just to give you an idea of who he is, and then we'll talk about the newer clips that came out recently. So this is a clip from early September 2021. Around this time, Donald Trump had been banned from Facebook, and Shane Vaughn was basically trying to find a way to work for Trump, to, to make this work to his benefit in some way. He was morally outraged, righteous indignation, if you will, at the fact that Trump was banned from Facebook for this short time. So let's give this clip a watch from Shane Vaughn, early September 2021. See what he had to say. Thousand patriots to become reporters for Donald Trump. Get his words out there since they wanted to be so smart that they wound up being stupid because they made the same mistake that Satan made when he killed Jesus Christ. Hmm. Isn't that an interesting comparison? Shane Vaughn just compared Donald Trump to Jesus. Isn't that fucking weird? All of these evangelical pastors continue to compare Trump to Jesus. What the fuck is going on here? By killing that one man and killing his voice, he created a world full of little Christians that echo the message of Christ. See? Stupid on the devil's part. The Bible says, had Satan known what was going to happen, he would never have crucified Jesus Christ. Because what he did was he started a harvest of Christians that echo the message. He only had one man to deal with. Now he's got a whole population full of us. Okay, let me give you a, a, a little secret here, Shane. I'll tell you this. You seem to be of the opinion that cancel culture always works against you. If somebody is canceled or deplatformed or whatever, it only makes them stronger. I hate to tell you this, for better or worse, deplatforming and canceling work. They actually do. Milo Yiannopoulos was successfully deplatformed and effectively canceled. And the dude is basically broke as shit. Nobody talks about him anymore. He has since been de-deplatformed by the right because now he's on like true news and stuff. So he's been coming up in the news a little bit more lately since his last faux pas kind of blew over, if you will. But deplatforming and canceling actually do work. And if you just put a second of thought into this to realize. That's why people get so upset over it when they're canceled or deplatformed. You would realize that it works. I'm not saying I'm in favor of deplatforming. I'm not saying I'm not in favor of it. I'm just saying deplatforming and canceling work, except for very narrow, specific cases like the supposed canceling or deplatforming of Jesus Christ, I guess, that one specific example you gave is kind of one of the only ones that really fits this situation. Alex Jones lost a ton of his followers when he was kicked off of Spotify and YouTube and, you know, iTunes and all the other stuff. Deplatforming works for better or worse. But the comparison to Jesus, comparing Donald Trump to Jesus, that, that comparison was not lost on me. Let's keep listening. Same thing they're doing with Trump. Let them crucify him. But we're now the echo, and we're going to put it on every page, every Twitter account, everything we got. Now, because the oversight board didn't rule that we couldn't share Trump content, it's allowed on Facebook, for now anyway. So take advantage of it. Once again, I just want to point out how fucking strange it is that he's continuing to compare Donald Trump to Jesus. I just want to make note of that. I'm ordaining all of you right now as evangelists of the Trump revival. The Trump revival? Seriously, does it get any more on the nose than this? I think it only gets more on the nose if you say that we're going to start using BT and AT before Trump and after Trump instead of B.C. and A.D., before Christ and after death. And then the Lord progressively began to speak regarding that, and he said, this time in the presidency is going to be a hinge of the ages, and 
you be known as before Trump and after Trump because of the way I'm going to use him. I'm using wow. him as a Trump card, but I'm the Trump card player. That is as on the nose as it gets. Dude is talking about the Trump revival. They view him as a messiah. I'm ordaining all of you right now as evangelists of the Trump revival. If that didn't convince you, I really don't know what will. In this next clip, he had some interesting shit to say. This one came out recently, mid-November 2021. In this clip, he's talking about the origins of Easter, and it has some really interesting parallels to modern day stuff. Check it out. And they would take one child and sacrifice that child to Baal. And then they would take the eggs and dye it in the blood yeah. of that child. I just want to point out, I don't know that anything that he's saying here is accurate about the origins of Easter. I, I'm extremely skeptical. I, I haven't heard a word about this. I mean, I know about the origins of Easter because I grew up Jehovah's Witness and they talked about all this stuff a lot. They talked about how it was pagan and blah, blah, blah. I haven't heard a fucking word about, you know, sacrificing kids and all that other stuff. But here he is bringing it up. Maybe it's true, but I, I'm extremely skeptical right off the bat. If somebody knows for sure that, like, there's some story about Baal and Easter and all that stuff, please put it in the comments and I'll pin the comment in this clip. But, um... I'm, I am skeptical. Let's keep listening. That's where dying Easter eggs comes from. That's why the official Easter egg color is red. Is it? I, I didn't know that. I hadn't heard that the official Easter egg color was red. This is news to me. Go look at the White House Easter egg every year. It's ruby red, the color of the blood of the children. What does this parallel? Is there some kind of a story that we know that we've heard in recent years that's eerily similar to this you guys may not know this story but in the QAnon belief system they have this idea that there's this thing called adrenochrome right the QAnon belief system is that when you scare somebody they have adrenaline pumping through their blood right and you've got this stuff called adrenochrome in their blood and if you drink this or if you consume the adrenochrome it gives you like a high it's like a drug but it only works if it's kids producing the adrenaline. So they'll basically, you know, attack these people for lack of a better term, and they'll drink the adrenochrome. That's the idea behind it. QAnon actually claimed to have a video of Hillary Clinton doing this, and they got real specific about where they got that video, and it's just complete nonsense from beginning to end. It's complete bullshit. But, you know, that doesn't stop them. I find it fascinating that this guy is now drawing this parallel between the QAnon belief about adrenochrome and Easter. This is a disturbingly similar story, right? Eggs are the symbol of what? Fertility. That's why I told you this story is a sex story. People get so uncomfortable when I say it, but you don't get uncomfortable when you celebrate it. You just don't want the truth coming in your face. You want to hide behind it. Eggs is all about uh, having babies. And we know what makes that. The whole religion of Satan is perversion. And God's Holy Ghost Church is right in there with him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Let me just step back a second and amplify this sound. See if you can hear what this dude's saying. They got the holy homos. That's what they got. They've got the holy what? I think we know exactly what kind of church this is, what kind of person this guy is, and what kind of people he has at his church. Churches in this town, every one of them, Easter egg hunting their children's out there, rolling them bunch of eggs, celebrating the sexuality. Dude lives in a delusion. And by the way, in case you didn't know, he is full-blown QAnon. There's another story that I just so happened to stumble upon about this guy. Title of this is Preacher slash Insurance Agent Faces Fraud Charges. This is on WAFB.com. And there's another story about the dude on insurancejournal.com about the exact same thing. Louisiana agent accused of insurance and bank fraud. 
I wanted to give this article a read and see what it says. The Louisiana Department of Insurance says a Baton Rouge agent has been served with two cease and desist orders and two fine notices for alleged insurance fraud, bank fraud, issuing worthless checks, filing false public records, felony theft, and identity theft. John Shane Vaughn, a.k.a. Aiden Bryce Adams, was served on February 1st, 2010 with the C&D orders, cease and desist orders, and two $50,000 fine notices. He was arrested by the Louisiana State Police Insurance Fraud and Auto Theft Unit on May 29th, 2009, and booked in the Livingston Parish Jail on one count of identity theft, one count of bank fraud, four counts of issuing worthless checks, and one count of felony theft. He was then booked into Jefferson Parish Prison on one count of identity theft, one count of bank fraud, and one count of felony theft. He was further booked into East Baton Rouge Prison on two counts of filing false public records, one count of identity theft, and two counts of insurance fraud. Vaughn is alleged to have stolen the identity of Aiden Adams and filed false public documents by submitting a fraudulent pre-licensing certificate and a fraudulent insurance producer application to the Department of Insurance. He's also alleged to have presented a materially false driver's license and social security number to obtain his agent appointment with the life insurance company, written an annuity policy secured by a worthless check in the amount of $212,000, holy shit! and intentionally misappropriated fraudulently obtained premiums. My God, this guy dug himself a hole. Department records show that John Shane Vaughn was issued a life accident and health license in January 2003, which was valid until the current action. Aiden Bryce Adams, which is his alias, I guess, was issued a life accident and health license in November 2007, which lapsed in 2008. Vaughn, a.k.a. Adams, has 30 days from the time of notice to file a written demand for an administrative hearing to contest the regulatory action taken against him by the Department of Insurance. Oh my god, this guy got himself in a world of trouble. That is a big fucking deal. This is John Shane Vaughn, East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office. This is his mugshot. This is mugshot number two, Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office. Mugshot number three, Louisiana State Police. Yeah. So we know what kind of person we're dealing with in Shane Vaughn, to say the least. He is obviously, seems obvious to me anyways, a scam artist. That brings us neatly to the most recent things that he's had to say. Uh, he just came out and had some interesting things to say uh, November 2021 uh, in a couple different clips. So let's give these clips a watch and see what he said for himself. Every signer of our Declaration of Independence, every one of them were descendants of the tribes of Israel. Uh, what? Is there any proof for that at all? Is he just laying that out there? I mean, he's saying it so confidently. Does he know it? Is he going to give us a documentation? Is he a historian? Or is he just pretending to be a historian like he was pretending to be a life insurance agent? You know what? Y'all might as well be seated because it looks like I'm going to preach these verses. Please do. Instead of read them. Every single descendant that signed our declaration were Israelites. Somebody say with me, America was a church before she was a nation. Then how's your fool in going to separate church from the state when we were born as a church? That's simply inaccurate. The Founding Fathers specifically, intentionally, put safeguards in to prevent church and state from getting too intermingled. People came to America for religious freedom back then because they didn't like the fact that they were kind of having the church crammed down their throat in their old countries. He is going against the principles laid out by the Founding Fathers when they came to this country and formed a government in the first place. He is going against what they wanted, directly against it. Thomas Jefferson specifically wrote letters to Danbury Church about this exact subject, saying that the government would stay out of church business and vice versa because Danbury Church was worried about it. 
They were worried about the government coming in and trying to tell them what they were allowed to preach, what they were allowed to talk about, that kind of thing. And Thomas Jefferson said, hey, don't worry about it. We will stay separate. It's very clear. It's in the Constitution. None of that matters to him, though. What matters is his narrative, his belief system that he's trying to cram down people's throats with no evidence. Saying that the U.S. was a church? Saying that the Founding Fathers were Israelites? Where is this even coming from? Uh, this is Christian nationalism, by the way. I, I don't know if you guys like picked it out or recognized it right off the bat, but yeah, that's what Christian nationalism is, and we've got a lot more Christian nationalism to cover tonight. There's another clip by uh, old Shane Vaughn here. Let's give this one a listen, see what he had to say. This one was from around the same time frame, early November 2021. And he wrote down, wow. we are going, he wrote a course, to New Israel, New Israel, New Israel. And when they came off the ship, they didn't plant an American flag. They planted the Christian flag mm -hmm. on the soil. They dedicated George Washington knelt and prayed. He's just repeating the same garbage from the last clip in a new venue. He seems to be like trying to go around to different venues and convince different audiences that they were Israelites that came here. Why Israelites anyways? Like Christianity existed at the time, right? Like when they came over to America, Christianity had existed for a good thousand years, 1500 years by the time they arrived in America. Like George Washington and everything as he's saying. What is he even talking about? He's just completely made this shit up. Dedicated America where the Twin Towers stand or stood. That's where America came into covenant with Yahweh, with God, was where the Twin Towers stand. Wow. Ain't that something? That is a tall claim. The Twin Towers is where Yahweh created a covenant with America, with George Washington. He is legit trying to make these people into religious figures, like George Washington and, and others, seemingly. That is unhinged shit right there. And it prayed, right? There's a chapel right outside the Twin Towers where George Washington, that picture of him praying by the horse, that's where it happened. Okay, that, that, there's, it's true that there's a chapel outside the Twin Towers. I believe it's called St. Paul's Chapel. I've got, I've got a book here. It's called, it's called Blue Guide New York, okay? And it is everything you would ever need to know about New York City from beginning to end. Everything. It's but what, it's 600 something pages, pretty extensive. Now, uh, he's mentioning the chapel outside the Twin Towers. I have read most of this book, not all of it. So I actually know what he's talking about. I know it's St. Paul's Chapel. Uh, let me see if I can find that page real quick. St. Peter's Church, St. Paul's Chapel, there it is. St. Paul's Chapel, one of the campus's most beautiful buildings, St. Paul's Chapel, was donated by Olivia Eggleston Phelps Stokes and Caroline Phelps Stokes, wow, that's a long name, as a memorial to their parents with the stipulation that it be designed by their nephew, Isaac Newton Phelps Stokes. God, that name, four different names, that's crazy. At the time, a young and relatively untried architect it was the first building at Columbia not designed by McKim, Mead, and White. Though, as a compromise, that firm acted as consulting architect. Stokes is also remembered for his six-volume history, The Iconography of Manhattan Island, 1915-28. to St. Paul's is shaped like a short Latin cross with a portico on the west, semicircular apes on the east, and a dome over the crossing. So many things wrong with this dude's description of that event. I don't even know where to start with it. That's where he dedicated our nation in covenant to God. If you will make us a great nation, deliver us from tyranny, then we will serve you. And he gave the nation to God at that point. What year was that? Can you tell me that, Shane Vaughn? What year did all that go down? Was that 1492 when Columbus was you know, trying to come over to the Americas? Was that the late 1700s when the government was officially forming and, and when the Revolutionary War was taking place and when 
George Washington actually became the president? I mean, when was that exactly? Which time frame are you telling me George Washington sailed over on the Mayflower and then knelt in front of St. Paul's Church? I'm really not sure. Every signer of the Declaration of Independence were descendants of the tribes of Israel. Israel. We can trace it. We know it. If we can trace it, give me the data, man. You can't just say we can trace it and then walk away from the conversation. We need to know more. I was a doctor of theology. I was the youngest ordained evangelist in America at 14 years old. Wow. I am extremely skeptical about that claim. A doctor of theology? Is that what he said? I was a doctor of theology. Sure enough, he was a doctor of theology. I was the youngest ordained evangelist in America at 14 years old. And the youngest ordained minister in America at 14 years old. I'm going to need a little evidence for that. I am extremely skeptical about pretty much every single word that came out of this guy's mouth since we started watching these clips. Wow. I've lived for the Lord my whole life, and I was dumb as a box of rocks and didn't know it. Really? You didn't know it? I find it so interesting when pastors like kind of insult themselves like that. There's one more pastor I know of who insulted himself like that. I'm dumber than a box of rocks in a lot of areas. <laughs> That's Greg Locke. Thank you, Greg Locke. I appreciate the input. Facebook just makes people think I'm smart. No, I don't think so. At 40 years old, because I thought that a Jew meant Israel and an Israel meant Jew. Until I started studying my Bible... And I found out that the first mention of the word Jew in the Bible is them fighting against Israel. In case you didn't catch on, he has a history of just straight up lying to people, claiming things that are blatantly untrue, that he has no data to back up. And it's real outlandish shit, too. Like, real outlandish shit. And he doesn't even seem to care, not to mention his legal problems in the past. Now, far be it for me to judge somebody for past legal issues. I've had some of my own. I was a drug addict. I've talked about that on stream before. I've had my own legal issues. But when you continue on to scam people out of money your entire life like this, I mean, we've got to recognize a pattern here. And this wasn't a, a simple, what's the term I'm looking for? This wasn't a crime of poverty, if you will. It's not a crime that you do because you're poor and you need money. What he was doing, this was him basically trying to scam hundreds of thousands of dollars out of people. Like, that is bizarre. I, I have no idea how he got out of that situation in the first place, but... Dude went on to be a pastor. I mean, it, it takes all kinds to be pastors, I guess, right? 